cannot feel <laughs> like that cold. So I come out here a lot just to warm up and think. Think about how the lessons that I've taught so far today went. Think about how I'm doing on implementing the training plan that I have for the week. Sometimes I'm on my cell phone and I'll call Mitch Moyer or, or anybody else that I need to call while I'm walking. And then I'm getting fuel points on my fuel band. So <laughs> I can tell you how many steps I've taken today since I've been up uh, 6,919 so I got to get to what 10,000 plus that's the goal. Tom Sokrychik is one of the leading coaches in U.S. figure skating. The established coach has led skaters to the top of the national medal rostrum at all levels and has coached several students to the world championships and the Olympic Games. The coach is known for his implementation of periodization techniques in detailed training plans and for his expertise in jumping technique. Early in August, we visited Tom to see a day in the life of a top figure skating coach. On the day we visited, Tom was working diligently with junior phenom Tessa Hong. Having only worked together for a few months, the coach and athlete were getting to know one another's styles and strengths. Remember, step strong and checked. And just watch that right arm as it passes through, right? And just make sure it shapes properly. Woo. On that day, Hong's run through suffered from numerous mistakes. Good job, Tessa. Up quick. So part of what she has to do now is uh, get used to all the content that we've added to her program since Colorado Champs. So today's program wasn't really about her not being able to do it. It was more about her thinking of the program as a whole instead of, and that's a good thing, especially for her. She plays the violin and I really feel like when she skates, she thinks of her performances as a whole. And so, that's what makes it so beautiful and seem like a performance and not just a clean program. However, when she's learning to add those skills, she's got to break it down more mentally and take it skill by skill to get it done and build the confidence so that in the future it can be effortless and not seem like it's separate, right? It was 101, so that's your baseline. I know you can do a better program. Is it hard to think of the whole thing with everything it from? What were you tired from? So here you go, the seven steps to mastery. So step number four perform the skill very well at speed and under fatigue right so so here's the deal we haven't done training like this because this is a new part and you're still we've only worked together for a few months so when you're going to do a section you don't get to stop after the pop and restart okay so that was your one free one but now you got to set it up make sure you slice your arms very close to the body and i don't think you need a technical cue do you you can do this open your mind to that possibility so she had a little trouble with that today uh, did not even bother me or surprise me because 
I think that's totally typical for a young 13 year old girl. She's certainly on track to compete with the Russians and we know what the young little Russian girls do. And this is new for her though, to have this type of content. And so it's just like Colorado Champs finished, I think on August 3rd and it is August 12th. So it's really uh, early on in her making that transformation. So after the program, breaking it down into a section and she wanted to pick the first section which i think was good because it has the double axle triple toe and the triple x triple toe in it with the triple flip however she was fatigued and she won't ever have to do that section that fatigued so i steered her in the direction of picking closer to the last section because the second triple lutz in the long is also new and then we worked on her um, she was excellent at it and she when I asked her how she got through those sections uh, While she was fatigued and here I go up the steps. She just said she Worked her mind a little better. It wasn't really an issue of technique It was her knowing she can do it when she's tired and I think all skaters go through that process of having to know that even when they're heart rate maxes out and their legs are burning, they can still do difficult skills. See, you are that mentally strong and physically strong. You are more tired now after doing your program, doing laps, than you were when you did your program. So it just shows if you have the right mindset, you could have done that better when your music was playing, right? So that was awesome. What did you learn from that, from doing that? You can still make yourself do it with your tired. Skill set number four, doing it under fatigue and knowing that you can. And that was pretty good quality too for next week. So we'll give you a minute and a half recovery, okay? So that was really about teaching her that so that the next time she does her program, she feels more confident about being able to do that. And hopefully, even if she feels tired, she can do it like she did those sections. Though Hong and Zakrychek have only worked together for a few months, the coach has a clear plan in mind. The plan is for her to win regional, sectionals, and nationals, and then get a spring international, and then compete in the Junior Grand Prix Series next fall. I know she's been put on the ISP, which is a total compliment. And, uh, you know, I know there's talk about her and possible JGP assignment, but that's really talk, right? That's, and that's out of our hands, so we're not focusing on that. We're just focusing on her and the goals that she has in front of her. Following this interview, Hong was named to the Junior Grand Prix roster in Spain. On the day we visited, one skater who was already getting ready for the Junior Grand Prix was Vincent Zhou. Eager to add a quad sow cow to his program, the skater focused and focused on it for more than a session. Thank you for the flat bike. Zakrychik was asked about just how many quads was too many. I would have corrected him normally, but I didn't today because I feel like where we are getting ready to leave in Slovakia, it's certainly something I'll talk to him about later today, but I think maybe he was distracted by a couple things and he has to kind of learn maybe from making that choice and not having go well and then figuring it out. So sometimes I stop a skater, but in that case I didn't.
definitely not in the program. He'll pull it in, but um, this is the tough stuff, right? Like he has to have a tight mind. We'll just force his mindset to be tight, right? He was a little shocked on his training plan that he had to do quad sows on the nine o'clock session, but we're uh, planning for him have to, to have to perform on one practice session um, and get all the things he has to do in the Junior Grand Prix, get a 40 minute session, and you can't say, oh, well, I'll do my quad on the second practice because you don't get one. And because the quad is so new, this was startling to him, but it's part of the process and so you got to see part of the process. I think a lot of skating fans who watch figure skating um, and see these young skaters do such amazing things, probably many times they go, oh they're so talented, oh they're so talented. But there's a lot of work that goes behind the scenes, that goes on behind the scenes even if they're talented. They still have to do a certain number of repetitions and um, you know just make that connection from the brain to the muscles and then in Vincent's case it's not that he can't do that because yesterday that was I think his first day where he hit the quad in the program with the music that was on the 10 o'clock session but it was a different kind of format for him so you know for me it was very much okay that he went about the practice that way um, even though that's not how I would advise him to do it and we'll talk about it later and I want him to come to his own conclusion so that next time he's in that situation he can calm himself down maybe work through it a little better with a cap on the reps but he should do uh, no more than six and I'm sure you have more than six <laughs> attempts and he's allowed to go to ten if he hits one but he didn't hit one so he sh should have really stopped at six. Later in the session, Vincent was asked by Coach Tom to leave the ice. While coaches are typically eager to have their skaters train as much as possible, we asked him why he made this decision. Well today, Wednesday, happens to be commitment day and that means in his case, when he had pop jumps because he's getting ready to go to the JGP in Slovakia, um, he had to do, be committed on all three of his sessions. So you saw Tessa pop, she also knows today's commitment day, but for her it's two out of her sessions that she chooses to be committed on. So there, it's a similar concept, but this, they're at different points, right? Because Vincent's getting ready to leave. And um, I mean, that's just meant a mental thing, right? And it really wasn't something we talked about. It was written in his plan. He probably read it today. I think, just if I'm being honest, he was a little mentally sloppy in his run through and uh, seemed agitated about the quad. But that's all part of the process. And if it was as easy as, you know, he's done probably 40 or more clean quad sows and if it was as easy as just being able to do a quad sow and adding to it to your program, then probably you would have skated a better program. But we're trying to fine tune that because our option in Slovakia is to put in a double Lutz, right? The way he chooses to back end load his program, um, the only other option he has for a jump box is a double Lutz, which is, you know, I know we both feel like it's kind of like, mm. So uh, he's definitely gonna go for the quad there. And then this commitment day teaches him that if he's gonna go for the quad and um, all the other things in the program, that he has to really be, he has to really be mentally on it. Just after our interview, Vincent went on to earn two silver medals on the Junior Grand Prix. Successful trips to Austria and Slovakia leave Vincent in contention to qualify for the Junior Grand Prix final. During our visit, one of the most intriguing skaters to watch was 2013 United States Champion, Max Aaron. Zakrychik has guided Aaron to the top of the medal rostrum and to two world championships. In recent years, Aaron has suffered narrow misses, failing to qualify for both the 2014 Olympic Games and the 2015 World Championships. Eager to rebrand himself, 
the skater has turned to choreographer Philip Mills to revamp the artistic side of his skating. When we arrived, Max had just returned from a warm-up competition at the 2015 U.S. Collegiate Championships, where he suffered a narrow loss to Ricky Dornbush. Sokrychik was asked to reflect on the competition. I watched the videos from collegiates. I do think that what I didn't see was an effort for the total performance there. The movements that he executed were much smaller and not finished like he had been doing in training. Certainly he had missed spin levels there that he had not been doing in training and, and also missed footwork levels. But I, I looked at the videos, I totally agree with every call that he was given by the technical panel. Um, but like I said, it wasn't, that wasn't the primary goal and uh, certainly it was a goal but not the primary goal so he, he got his he got information about his goal. I don't know, I don't really want to say what his goal was for that competition, uh, but he got a lot of information which he shared with me and his sports psychologist and you know, we're gonna set some goals based on that information. I think that would really be for Max to speak about if he wants to speak about it publicly. And um, however, I mean, at Champs Camp, it's really like another competition, so. <laughs> Hopefully he will build on collegiates and skate more like he, he was doing in training. Even today when he did that quad sow double toe, I mean that's been a huge goal to not do that, right? To do the triple no matter what, which he had been doing in training. I think maybe I counted 14 plus uh, run throughs where he was pretty much spot on. And so what he delivered at collegiates um, wasn't close to that. And then to see him do the quad double, it's to me not desirable for a skater of his stature to, to let that happen. So, um, but you know, it's what, a couple days after collegiates. But in the context of a couple days after collegiates with Champs Camp coming, um, you know, he, he, it's probably okay, but he should, in my mind, be a little bit more mentally tough and aggressive still. This season, both coach and student are eager to make a return trip to the World Championships. The coach was asked just what it will take to accomplish this feat. Well, I think he has to deliver what he trains. Um, and, and even if the quality in the past has not been as high as some of the other men, Max still hasn't been doing his job. And he has to be the best he can be to have a shot at being the champion, right? And then, so number one, and I think Max would agree with that. And then number two, the quality of execution of his spins and of his programs has to be higher. And I don't mean jumps. Uh, of course, the jumps should always be a positive GOE. But just, um, you know, he's chosen music and Philip and he have a plan and he has to stick to that plan and deliver it like he practices it, right? So that's to me more mental than physical. He's changed his physique. I don't know if you can tell. He's really uh, removed a lot of bulky, yeah, muscle mass, so he's much more leaner. And there are a lot of other goals we have. We, of course, we listen to the feedback all the time from all the pundits, whether it's officials from our country or people like you, or, you know, so we're always listening to the feedback. We, most of the time we don't even disagree with it, but it's not as easy as identifying what needs to get fixed and then just fixing it in one competition. For me, I think I have a handle on an arc for Max because this is going into our seventh season, so I know what he was like when he came. I know how he improved to be junior champion and go to junior worlds and the junior Grand Prix. And then I know what he did as he transitioned and he had no senior Grand Prix to get senior Grand Prix and be the US champion and on the world team. And I know how he prepared for Sochi and came up short and then what the last two years have been about. So I get that part of it, but I also get the arc that he's on, right? He's not the same kid, he's 23, he's not 17. He's a young man, he has so much else in his life and things that go on in his life beyond skating that he just has to deal with and kind of compartmentalize. So I see the process and uh, certainly he gets criticism, but I, I think a lot of coaches and even athletes at this stage would, would realize that a lot of it is up to them, right? To be all in and fully committed daily and 
in every way, not just most of the ways. Rounding out the group of Zakrychek's elite skaters is 2008 United States champion Mirai Nagasu. The two teamed up in the spring of 2014 after Nagasu failed to be named to the Olympic team despite a top three finish at the U.S. Olympic Trials. Last season, an ill-timed injury at Nationals left Nagasu with a 10th place finish. Days before our visit, Nagasu earned gold at the U.S. Collegiate Championships. Zakrychek reflected on what it would take for Nagasu to return to the success that she found in her earlier days in the sport. Belief, self-belief. I mean, I think it's a little better. I actually watched her programs uh, that you guys put on uh, the internet. I was quite pleased with her free skate. Um, that was really her first, uh, her first serious time out with her program. She, to her credit, she signed up for Santa Fe also in May and uh, did both of those programs there. And then she also did them at Broadmoor Open. Um, her short was the best at Broadmoor Open. She, she, she um, actually did the triple axel there on one foot with a carrot, but she missed her triple loop. But she, that was her best short. So this short was certainly not um, up to par with what she trains. But you know there aren't too many girls that will risk a triple axel in competition either. And so for her to have those two girls that were essentially clean and she was just a point and a few tenths behind them with a major mistake and a miss spin level and not such a great triple triple, like to me that was very encouraging. Um, and I mean I really want to keep the triple axle in her short, um, probably not the long but in the short. And um, I thought her long looked more of like she trained. Um, I did think her triple flip, triple toe was clean on both ends. Uh, it didn't look like a carrot to me, but I think on your video you couldn't really see the axle toe, but Mariah told me that it wasn't a good one, right? The toe, she knew that wasn't good. And the Lutz looked a little, so getting rid of those carrots, but um, she certainly improved the Lutz edge. Um, and, you know, she's she does so many great things. Um, I think her success at a young age created a lot that she has to live up for or live up to and for her I think that's the challenge and um, certainly I recognize the kind of athlete that she can be and I also think that U.S. figure skating has expected great things from her. I think that's been tough for her to handle. So helping her through that so that she can believe in herself and be even greater. Uh, because she's the kind of athlete that should be pushing for the world podium just like Ashley and Gracie, right? She shouldn't be at world championships and not third, fourth, fifth. Like, she should be right up there. Sakrychik's coaching methods will soon be tested. With the ISU Challenger Series and the Grand Prix of figure skating just around the corner, we will soon see whether Zakrychik's planning will prove successful.